What did you find in the abandoned asylum? The Ashcroft Asylum, with its towering, ivy-clad walls and barred windows, had stood abandoned on the outskirts of town since the fire that claimed it 50 years ago. Rumors swirled of the patients who were trapped inside, their screams echoing into the night as the blaze consumed everything. It was a place avoided by the townsfolk, a monument to suffering and despair. My fascination with the paranormal, however, drew me to its decaying embrace. Armed with little more than a flashlight and a camera, I breached the asylum's perimeter one fog-shrouded evening, the silence of the abandoned grounds heavy with anticipation. The main doors creaked open with an ominous groan, revealing a maze of corridors shrouded in darkness, the air thick with dust and the weight of untold stories. I wandered the halls, the names and faces of former patients adorning the walls, their eyes following me, a gallery of the forgotten. It was in the east wing where the fire had begun that I found the door to the basement, untouched by the flames but not by the passage of time. Descending the stairs, the air grew colder, a palpable sense of dread enveloping me. The basement was a labyrinth of rooms and hallways, the remnants of restraint chairs and medical equipment casting sinister shadows. It was then that I heard it, a soft sobbing echoing through the corridors, so faint it could have been mistaken for the wind. Drawn by the sound, I followed it to a locked door, the name Dr. Harrow emblazoned on a plaque. The sobbing grew louder, more desperate, as if aware of my presence. With a force born of both fear and determination, I broke the lock and pushed the door open. The room beyond was a scene of horror that defied explanation. Chains hung from the ceiling, and an array of surgical instruments, rusted and stained, lay scattered across a blood-soaked table. But it was the walls that sent shivers down my spine, covered in frantic scratchings, a madman's diary of experiments performed on the very patients he was sworn to protect. In the corner of the room, barely discernible in the dim light, stood a figure, its form flickering like a candle flame in the draft. It was Dr. Harrow, or what remained of him, trapped in a moment of torment, reliving his final, monstrous acts. His eyes met mine, a gaze filled with madness and sorrow, and he spoke, his voice a whisper of malice and regret. They were my masterpieces, he said, gesturing to the walls, but their souls were louder than I anticipated. I fled the basement, the echoes of the forsaken chasing me, the sobbing now a chorus of anguish that filled the asylum. The night air never felt so sweet, nor had the world of the living ever seemed so precious. The Ashcroft Asylum remains a place of nightmares, its corridors and rooms haunted by the ghosts of those who suffered within its walls. The terror I encountered in the basement, the twisted legacy of Dr. Harrow, is a chilling testament to the darkness that resides in the hearts of men, a darkness that lingers long after the flames have died.